we wanted to talk about the energy of passion and how it fits into this global process of uh, resolution of climate change optimally and constructively, and in many cases, necessarily. So the definition in, in the dictionary of, of passion is a strong and barely controllable emotion. And, and of course, there are lots of strong and barely controllable emotions in our world of, that are not, not all that helpful to this process. Uh, hatred, anger, fear, of resentment, vengeance, etc. And that said, we're not we're not projecting any of that onto this word uh, of passion. We would suggest that it's useful for us as an organization to evolve a, a collaboratively evolve a a, def, a working definition, an operational definition, and a constructive definition so that we can utilize that, that agreed upon perspective on, on the passionate energies of our world so that we are able to engage them and channel them and guide them into the most wholesome, healthy, uh, functional, constructive and optimal results and organizational process. <clears throat> Passion occurs in our world. You may have heard of crimes of passion, people that uh, that kill people they love very in, in a, a moment of a fit of passion, so to speak. That's not the kind of passion that we're we're suggesting is uh, is the way we work or operate as an organization. And of course, it's it's not the the fuel that we would be seeking to uh, to bring into the organization. That said, there are many beautiful passions. Artists, uh, great artists and actors and actresses and, <clears throat> and creative folk operate from passion in, in many ways. It, it, it's at least an ingredient in, in the, their process of life. And it's a necessary ingredient and it can be quite a, a fulfilling ingredient for them to experience and, and to resonate with. And, uh, and we hope to, to, in some cases, ignite healthy compassion, uh, sorry, healthy passion and compassion, both at the same time in, in any and all of the people that we would uh, meet in the workshop and in that we would engage with as an organization and in the team of teams and to ensure that the that that energy is optimally co-creatively applied in the most functional healthy uh, positive ways that we can every step of the way in in everyone's participation in order to arrive at the most optimal unfoldments of, of our organization's process and our effect and results in the world. So the, uh, the challenge is that in, in the current human paradigm, many people uh, are not, they do not apply discernment to their process of passion. Therefore they feel passionate about something and then that passion generates obscuration as to when, where, how, and why that energy can or should be applied. And then when that happens, they get into a non-aligned state with other people and inadvertently work at cross purposes with them and very passionately feel that they're right for doing so. And their passion tells them that their it senses a self-rationalizing emotional dynamic. It tells them that, that their passion is all that does matter. And thus anyone else's uh, passion is either wrong or not optimal or not as important. And, is, and it doesn't tell their passion that it's useful to collaborate with other people's passions. You see the, the, uh, the challenge that that can generate in 
in collaborative endeavor. So absolutely, we, we want to engage passion and compassion and love and kindness and caring intentions and service approaches that people would offer. And we do also hope to synthesize them, align them, integrate them, and uh, help them participate in the collaborative process of the WSS in ways that are completely fulfilling, meaningful for them, and recognizably healthy, wholesome, and beneficial, and in ways that they can appreciate and that they can derive fulfillment from as a result. And, and that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't mean that there's not mind in the process or intellect or uh, consciousness, of course, that would guide that application of uh, and trans potentially the transmutation of that energy of passion into the, the most optimal uh, places for it to be expressed. Uh, meaning if, if passion ebbs and flows, across time, it is, it's not something to either be ignored and it's not something to not be engaged with. It is, it's something that is, uh, for most people, is not something that they <clears throat> always operate from consistently. And there are people who are very passionate about certain things in the world and they work consistently and diligently at them. Uh, we, we would say we are passionate about service to humanity and uh, solving global issues and uh, healing in the world. And that said, the, the dynamic of uh, passion for some folks is not a consistent dynamic. So we would want to engage in those energies where optimally discernibly feasible and uh, beneficial and, and also uh, not necessarily depend upon them as a uh, a fuel for the WSS process. Passion is inevitably in its, in its viscerally experienced form. It is a dynamic of ego. Now that doesn't, it doesn't make it bad. And tribe is not bad. Ego is not bad. They, they are fuels <clears throat> for potentially higher attainment of consciousness. We, we couldn't evolve without them in, in our, the earlier stages of the, our evolution as, a, as individual human beings or the collective, we couldn't be having this conversation now if we hadn't had some fuel, diesel fuel, uh, toxic, terrible diesel fuel and, and fossil fuels that we've been burning now for over 100 years. We wouldn't have all the technological development that we have in this moment were it not for those those diesel fuels. We're not advocating our fossil fuels. We're not advocating them. We are saying that they were part of our earlier evolution of energy production, management, and thus affecting our, our collective life process in the world. It's necessary that we move out of those. Passion we would and, we, and ego identity, would, we would say, are basically the same process tribe, ego, uh, narcissism or passion or uh, strong negative emotions are toxifying and, and, they, and they damage and wound people. That, so then they're required to heal after they've been damaged by those uh, intense emotions. So it's useful to be very consciously, discerningly discriminating and uh, and selective of what passion you, one would utilize to fuel their life process by. Uh, you can just love the, 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 the heartfelt love we have for you and for all of humanity. We, it's a constant process. It doesn't go away. It's, and it's not, uh, it's not an uncontrol, it's, there's no need to control it because it's just love. Passions often, need to be counter op or optimally counterbalanced by wisdom, discernment, self-restraint, uh, fear of the negative results of what our passions could yield in the world because passions are not intelligent energies. So 
again, any, if someone move, if someone participates initially out of passion, it's useful to not to throw that away or tell them to, to get rid of it. It's useful to transmute it and guide it and channel it into very conscious, wise, caring, compassionate, loving, discerning, and empathetic dynamics and collaborative participation. <laughs>